this is the very first video after rebranding. Welcome to the Manga Geekdom. Today we're doing the top 12 most anticipated manga for the month of March 2023. First book I'm recommending is Ayashimon Volume 1 from Viz Media. This is written and drawn by Yuji Kaku. It was unfortunately cancelled prematurely, but still, I do recommend it. It's awesome enough. Let me tell you a little bit about it. When the Enma Syndicate's chairman dies, Japan's supernatural underworld is turned on its head, leaving gangs of Ayashimon poised on the brink of war. Urara, the late chairman's daughter, has plans to come out on top, and she's found an unlikely ally to help make it happen. Maruo, a human who dreams of being a manga hero. Official descriptions aside, I really enjoyed this series. It's only going to be three volumes, but it's a nice shonen supernatural book with a lot of charm and personality. I really like that Maruo is extremely strong, but he is honest and a good kid. He can't find a job, but when he encounters Urata, that changes. We're introduced to the Ayashimon, which are essentially, uh, you know, yokai like spirits. I like the contrast between the main world and then you have this underbelly of all the Ayashimon and great scenes of their city and them dealing with all the supernatural hijinks is really fun to see. The art is great, stories unique, highly recommend it if you're willing to give it a shot. My Clueless First Friend. This is volume one published by Square Enix and this is a manga by Taku Kawamura. One lonely, gloomy fifth grade girl is the target of her classmates relentless bullying and teasing. That is until a new kid arrives on the scene. Friendly Takata is as clueless as he is well-meaning but somehow he possesses the magic ability to start drawing Grim Reaper Nishimura out of her shell. As the elementary schoolers experience all the fun of a child childhood summer together, from going to the pool to picking up sunflowers to watching fireworks and unusual friendship blossoms. I have not read this before, I didn't know about it until making this video, but it sounds wholesome and interesting enough. It's a comedy slash school life manga. It has good artwork, I'm happy to recommend it. Now it's not a volume 1, but I'm recommending Dinosaur Sanctuary. Here is volume 2 finally out. This was one of my favorite reads of last year. Highly recommend this series from Itaro Kinoshita. Essentially what would happen if dinosaurs were still alive and we capture and modify these creatures to suit our needs and place them in zoos across the globe and all that stuff. It's a sci-fi meets slice of life series. You have this girl that her dream is to work at one of these zoos, she gets the opportunity and you have sort of that day-to-day -day experience of working with the animals, in this case, the dinosaurs. This is a super wholesome, nice series. I love the art and attention to detail to getting the facts straight about dinosaurs and presenting them in the most realistic way possible. Super recommended. Even though it's a volume two, you can still get volume one and then jump on board with volume two here. And I forgot to mention, this is published by Seven Seas Entertainment. The Skull Dragon's Precious Daughter, Volume 1. Another Seven Seas title. This is a fantasy adventure series. A little bit of slice of life elements. Written and drawn by Ichi Yukishiro. The plot for this lets us know that it's in a faraway land. There exists a forest where all manner of beings go to dispose of their trash. One day, a young girl named Eve is abandoned along with the usual debris. But she is quickly found by an aging dragon who decides to take her in and raise her as its own. Under this ancient being's watchful eye, Eve grows up happy and healthy, but soon their peaceful life together is interrupted by impending tragedy. Yet months later, Eve does something truly astonishing for the sake of reuniting with her dragon guardian. Now, if you mention impending tragedy, I know that stuff is going to happen and we're all going to be super sad about it, but it sounds cool. I do recommend this. Go check it out. Insomniacs After School. This one is published by Viz Media. This is a comedy slash drama, a little bit of school life, slice of live action, written and drawn by Makoto Ojiro. This one has been highly anticipated and it also has an upcoming anime adaptation. So in my channel, I always say if there's an anime adaptation, go with that. And if you like it, come back and get the original source material. So in the case for this book, we follow two sleepless teenagers, 
that find kinship as they escape to their school's astronomy observatory. Unable to sleep at night, Ganta Nakami is cranky in class and unpopular with his classmates. Nakami discovers that the observatory, once used by the defunct astronomy club, may be the perfect place for a nap. But he's not alone. Nakami and his new friend Isaki Magari find comfort in each other while coping with insomnia. In a fun plot twist, no one goes near the astronomy tower because there are rumors about the fate of the last club members. Nakami and his classmates decide it's their insomniac's sanctuary. Unfortunately, the school faculty can't allow the unsanctioned use, but if there's a new astronomy club, things might be a little bit different. I really like the artwork on this and the kooky premise. I think this would be a fun addition to anybody's library if you're into this sort of premise. Call the Name of the Night, Volume 1 from Yen Press, a fantasy romance series by Tama Mitsuboshi. Deep in the forest, a curious pair resides, a young girl, Mita, whose affliction leads her to call forth darkness whenever she's in distress, and her physician, Rei, determined to seek a cure. Each day, she works to remember the light and bring back the person she used to be. But a sudden visit from Rei's friend, who harbors an interest in Mita's illness, may be the end of their peaceful day. Days. The cover for this immediately hooked me on this series, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Super interested in Call the Name of the Night. The Tunnel to Summer, The Exit of Goodbyes, Ultramarine, Volume 3. Now I know what you're thinking, didn't you say on the last episode that you didn't want to recommend long-running series? Well, this one's only four volumes. I am a huge fan of this series. I really enjoyed the first two volumes. I highly recommend it. This is based on a famous light novel or an award-winning light novel, I should say. And it's a drama mixed with sci-fi and slice-of-life elements. This is written by May. Hachimoku and art by Kodon. According to an urban legend, there's a tunnel where you can get anything you desire in exchange for your youth, the Urashima Tunnel. That's sort of the opening premise for this series. We follow the main character as he's dealing with some past trauma and tragedy, but he keeps hearing about this tunnel. And if you find it and walk through it, your heart's desire will be on the other side in exchange for years of your own life. There's a little bit more to it than just unnatural, spooky sci-fi stuff. There's more drama to it, but I really do recommend it. I love the character designs. The artwork on this is fantastic. A really fun concept for all you sci-fi fans out there. Studio Apartment, good lighting, Angel Included, Volume 2, another Volume 2 here, but this is wacky enough that I am comfortable recommending. This is a romance uh, by Yen Press, and it is written by Matoba. Shintaro Tokimitsu is a high schooler living all alone when he encounters a pure and kind girl named Toa on his balcony. But who is she really? Toa is incredibly pure and sweet, but there's something different about her. You can take a guess by the cover pictures here. Shintaro has found himself living together in his studio apartment with an angel named Toa. The two are gradually adjusting to living together when everything takes a turn for the worse. Shintaro must figure out how to work things out with his friends, a new angel, and a snow lady phantom at work. So this one, I do like the art. I think it's a fun little story and uh, only two volumes have come out so far. So it's not a huge investment that I can recommend you getting more than one book to try out on a new series. March Comes In Like a Lion, Volume 1. This was delayed before from Denpa. It's a slice of life drama. This is a very famous series with a very popular anime adaptation as well. This is by Chika Umino, and we follow Rei Kiriyama, a child prodigy. He's an up and coming shogi player on the verge of turning pro, but he has no home life or much of a life period outside his board game. But thankfully, with the help of lifelong friends, he has an opportunity to start all over again. So there is some past trauma for the main character. As you read on, you find out pretty early. However, to me, this is a story of figuring out your life and, and dealing with trauma and how do you move forward. It's a nice mix of drama and sports, obviously shogi, but it's still compelling enough and the characters are 
great and well written and this is something that I think should be on people's radar. I really like the art and I'm super happy that it's finally out in North America. Fingers crossed as of this video it does come out because it was already delayed once. Tombs by Junji Ito, story collection hardcover from Viz Media. Pretty excited to check these out. I am a fan of Junji Ito like many and I'm going for a complete set. So yes, of course I will be picking this up and I think you should do as well. I don't necessarily know which stories are going to be in this, but we're nearly done collecting the short stories. I think they've done a really good job of making these hardcovers accessible for everyone. This is the first release of three this year for Junji Ito, so I'm excited about that. Fresh Nightmares brought to you by the master of horror Junji Ito. Box of Light Volume 2 Story and Art by Seiko Erisawa. This is being published by Seven Seas Entertainment. Volume 1 was one of my favorite manga from last year that I got. Really enjoyed that. Made a video on it if you want to check it out. I'll leave a link at the end of the video. This is a story about a convenience store that lingers at the boundary between life and death. Its faint glow in the darkness draws in unsuspecting souls, pushing them closer to the final purchase they'll ever make. Yet for the quirky employees who work there, it's a job much like any other, if undeniably more strange. So last year when I first heard of Box of Light, it didn't have on its first solicit the volume 1 part, so I was really surprised when I saw the actual physical thing and was surprised that yeah, volume 1, so we're getting more stories and I'm really excited about it. This was a really fun read. Like I mentioned in the description, it is a convenience store in the borderline of life and death. It you go into the backstories of these individuals and if they make it or not, if they leave back to their regular lives or if they pass on to the afterlife. It's a fun, quirky series, very episodic in nature. The art in this book is very indie. The writing has a very nostalgic, wholesome feel while also giving you the spooks or the creeps, if you will. But nonetheless, wholeheartedly recommend Box of Light Volume 2. Finally, to wrap up this video, The Valiant Must Fall. This is by Yu Aida, published by Seven Seas. It's a historical samurai epic, but it also mixes elements of the supernatural. The Tokugawa shogunate has fallen, and former samurai Haruyasu is adrift in a strange new world searching for a place to die. But when he attempts to assassinate a government official, hoping this will bring the eternal peace he craves, Haruyasu finds himself at the mercy of the official's bodyguard, a young woman who claims she's the daughter of an immortal. What will she ask in return for sparing his life? In all honesty, in the making of this video, I found out about this series and I am a huge fan of Feudal Japan and Samurai stories and all that so I was immediately drawn to this and I can't wait to check it out. I love the art on it. I'm excited to see where the story takes us with the whole immortality aspect. So there you go guys, 12 anticipated manga for the month of March. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, share it, subscribe if you haven't, it'll mean a lot. Thank you everybody that has stuck with me for so many years now and this is a new era. The manga geekdom, super thrilled about that. So that's gonna be it for now. Let me know in the comment section what are you most excited for in the month of March. Leave your recommendations and uh, picks down in the comment section below. That's gonna be it for now. I've got to go. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next episode.